and welcome to the show. You're watching Tech 24. I'm Julia Seeger. Coming up, from John Legend to Scott Davis, many big names in music are pushing their avatars on stage, favoring virtual concerts. This as COVID-19 continues to stall the comeback of live music. So can technology enhance creativity? We'll ask that question to the famous music composer, Jean-Michel Jacques. And the same question has been asked during the first online version of the music event Midem here in France. Dan and Jake Hattelkar tells us which innovative startups are set to occupy the market over the next few years. Like many other sectors, the music industry has been greatly disrupted by the COVID-19 pandemic. During lockdown, many artists turned to social media platforms to perform living room concerts. And while American rapper Travis Scott partnered with Fortnite to live stream a concert, which, which actually brought in 27 million viewers, John Legend drew half a million people on the popular virtual platform Wave. Soudange Moujan has more on whether VR concerts will become the new reality for concert goers. French musician Bob Sinclair, Jean-Louis Aubert, Christine and the Queens, and Anna Souchon. They all gave free live performances during France's coronavirus lockdown. Out of solidarity, the streamed live shows were such successes they could become commonplace for all kinds of music, but not for free. Paying to access an online concert, that's what the soprano Barbara Hendricks set up, with proceeds going to refugees who are struggling because of the coronavirus. The theater was deserted, but many were watching online. C'était comme si on était dans une salle euh, pleine avec les gens devant nous. The success of virtual concerts means they may have a more permanent future in front of them. Even if for producers, online shows will never replace the real thing. L'émotion n'est pas numérisable. Le public, pour moi, c'est un des musiciens du concert. Donc un concert est bon quand le public est bon. Et je trouve que cette frénésie, cette, euh, cet échange, ce partage, cette émotion collective euh, ne peut pas se, se vivre derrière son téléphone ou son, son ordinateur. Nothing can substitute the feeling of being at a great sold out concert. But new ways of experiencing music are in the works. Now, the French electronic music pioneer Jean Michel Jarre is one of the biggest champions of VR concerts. On June 21st, he held a virtual event called Alone Together that got hundreds of thousands of views across both VR and non-VR streaming options like YouTube. This actually allowed fans who were using headsets to interact with one another through virtual avatars. Well, to speak more about it, I'm joined by Jean-Michel Jarre. It's a pleasure to have you on the show. Uh, so we were all on our smartphones during lockdown to follow the performances of artists throughout the world. But this time, we're actually diving into the screen with you. So how has this technology changed your creative process? Hi, nice to uh, see you and to uh, share this uh, moment with you all. Yes, indeed, uh, this uh, Alone uh, Together project is a real world premiere. It's a French one and uh, promoting the idea of uh, VR as a, a new way of expression, new mode exp expression beyond uh, the world of video games. The idea and the challenge was to create the first live performance ever uh, in a virtual uh, reality uh, through my avatar in front of other avatars, part of the audience, but also beyond these avatars, also for people in, uh, behind their smartphones and their uh, tablets and, and their laptops. So, uh, uh, and, and, and what's, what's quite exciting, it's actually, it's not... The purpose is not to replace, of course, live performances because that, that's uh, it, it's not it's not the it's not the matter. It's not the idea. The idea is actually to propose uh, something new, a new mode expression in phase with the technology we are using uh, on a day to day life. Now, you claim that VR is inherently a social tool that actually brings us closer to one another. How so? You know, VR is not uh, just a gimmick and another another fun thing. It's as also a social uh, 
dimension or social aspect. Uh, you have so many people these days being isolated uh, for uh, different reasons and also for handicap or socially or, because, or on a geographic point of view. And uh, the fact that you can suddenly, like in, Mat like in the movie Matrix or Ready Player One or, or Clones, I mean, being able to, through your own avatar, to uh, join uh, to join a group of people, to meet with people, uh, sharing the same emotions at the same time, and uh, able to discuss even all these, these events when it's happening. This is something absolutely new, and, and VR is also has that social aspect, which, which in my opinion is very important. I was actually very interested in, by, by this aspect by doing this uh, uh, first uh, first live uh, performance. This is also a very important aspect beyond the kind of video game aspect and, and, and the fun aspect. There is something deeper in this, the, the idea of we can share the same moments exactly the, the, in the same way that if we were physically in the, in the same place, exactly in the same way, except you can, you can have your own appearance and also you can produce for an artist and you can create something that would be absolutely impossible to create on stage. On the real stage. Jean-Michel Jarre, thank you so very much for speaking to us here on Tech24. Okay, bye-bye and uh, thanks for having me on the show. And it's time to welcome our in-house expert, Dan and Jake Hadelkar. Hello, Dan. Hi, Julia. Now, the MIDEM, which is a, a global event for the music industry that happens once a year here in France, and that was actually hosted online this year for social distancing reasons, has just ended. So maybe we can do a, a world tour of the best innovations that were showcased during the MIDEM. Let's start with Selfeggio, Fel, Selfeggio, Selfeggio yeah. from Latvia. Well, Selfeggio is a company that has developed an application that makes learning music easier. So you can choose a song from the app library and as you play the song, it is accompanied by melody, by chords and rhythm that makes it easier to learn while you're playing. Uh, it's useful for teaching, uh, say, children in a classroom, or it can be also a useful tool for remote learning. The second application is called Paradiddle. It uh, lets you play drums in virtual reality. So using an Oculus Rift or a Windows Mixed Reality headset or HTC Vive, uh, you can select drum sets, you can scale them, you can choose and store them so that when you are, enter the session again, those drum sets remain there and you can create music and share it with other users. Now this next innovation blew my mind. It was developed by MIT and it's called Pixel Player and you can choose and isolate which instrument you want to listen to in a video. Well, yes, it uh, is a deep learning system, so it's able to isolate sounds in a video of a musical concert, uh, which are specific to certain instruments. So, uh, for example, if there's a piano and a violin in a concert, now normally in a concert, both these sounds are mixed, but if you just want to listen to one of the instruments, as we can see here, there's a guitar player and a violin player. So the moment you put your browser on one of the instruments, it's able to isolate that sound and you can listen to only that part of the music while muffling the other uh, instruments. This is done because it's able to associate each pixel in this video, for example, with a specific audio beat. Dan and Jake Hadokar, thank you very much indeed for that. We're going to move on now to Test24. This week in Test24, we take a look at a new application developed by a French startup that facilitates organizing jam sessions. Dan, before we actually describe <laughs> the app, can you uh, do a little demo? Well, I can do that, but only at the cost of making a fool of myself, but I'm willing to do that. Let's I, try it out. <laughs> yeah, actually, the founder of Jamspace, Alice Robla, has been kind enough to lend me her guitar and also to give me some guitar lessons. I don't know if I learned everything properly, but here I go. Sounds like Queen. You're right, I was trying to play Crazy Little Thing Called Love. So well, it's not that bad. You definitely did a good job. So tell us more <laughs> about this application. But yes, How Jam does it Space work? is a platform that uh, allows musicians to get in touch with each other in order to have jam sessions, in order to have rehearsals in uh, music studios. Uh, right now it's um, only restricted to Paris, but uh, it's going to expand to the uh, entire France and possibly Europe. Uh, currently it's only a web-based app. 
but the idea is to develop it into uh, a mobile application as well where musicians can not only perform in music studios or arrange rehearsals in music studios, but there's also a chance that they would be able to perform it online so they can be in the comfort of their homes and they can have these jam sessions. Uh, as of now on the web-based app, the musicians can of course put their location and their expertise, the kind of instruments they are um, keen on playing or are good at and using that they can meet other people and then later on the application uh, will be developed in such a way that the application itself will suggest which musicians they should pair up in order to have a fun um, rehearsal session. It is definitely a fun platform. Thank you very much indeed for that, Dhananjay Kadalkar. It actually brings us to the end of this week's edition of Tech 24. You can watch it again on our website, france24.com. See you soon.